for signaling who is saying what in your own writing. To avoid confusion in your own writing, make sure that at every point your readers can clearly tell who is saying what. But I've been told not to use I. Although you may have been told that the I word encourages subjective, self-indulgent opinions rather than well-grounded arguments, we believe that text using I can be just as well-supported or just as self-indulgent as those that don't. For us, well-supported arguments are grounded in persuasive reasons and evidence, not in the use or non-use of any particular pronouns. Furthermore, if you consist consistently avoid the first person in your writing, you will probably have trouble making the key move addressed in this chapter, differentiating your views from those of others, or even offering your own views in the first place. But don't just take our word for it. See for yourself how freely the first person in you is used by writers quoted in this, in this book, and by the writers assigned in your courses. Nevertheless, certain occasions may warrant avoiding the first person in writing. For example, that she is correct instead of I think that she is correct. Since it can be monotonous to read an unvarying series of I statements. I believe, I think, I argue. Another trick for identifying who is speaking. To alert readers about whose perspective you are describing at any given moment, you don't always have to use overt voice markers like X argues, followed by a summary of the argument. Instead, you can alert readers about whose voice you're speaking in by embedding a reference to X's argument in your own sentences. Hence, instead of writing, liberals believe that cultural differences need to be respected. I have a problem with this view, however. You, may, you might write, I have a problem with what liberals call cultural differences. There is a major problem with the liberal doctrine of so-called cultural differences. You can also embed references to something you yourself have previously said. So instead of writing two cumbersome sentences like, earlier in this chapter we coined the term voice markers, we would argue that such markers are extremely important for reading comprehension. You might write, we could argue that voice markers, as we identified them earlier, are extremely important for reading comprehension. Embedded references like these allow you to economize your train of thought and refer to other perspectives without any major interruption. Embedding voice markers. When writers fail to use voice marking devices like the ones discussed in this chapter, their summaries of others' views tend to become un tend to become confused with their own ideas, and vice versa. When readers cannot tell if you are summarizing your own views or endorsing a certain phrase or label, they have to stop and think, wait, I thought the author disagreed with this claim. Has she actually been asserting this view all along? Or, hmm, I thought she would have objected to this kind of phrase. Is she actually endorsing it? Getting in the habit of using voice markers will keep you from confusing your readers and help alert you to similar markers in the challenging text you read.